Hi guys, so today I want to do something fun. I uh, recently unboxed this um, Crafter's Companion number 14 box and I always show the boxes to you guys and then I never like, I just put them on my desk and I don't use them. So I said, you know what, I'm going to use this one because I have lots of other things I kind of want to play with anyway that kind of have to do with this kind of thing, like with different mediums. And maybe I'm just going to use, you know, ink or maybe I'll use some, I don't know, not gesso, but something like that, something nice and thick. I don't know, we'll see. But I'm going to be using um, the stencils from this kit. I'm assuming they're going to start selling stencils or continue selling. I don't even know how they do their stencil game at Crafter's Companion. But um, I know they did a flower forming kit last month. And now on HSN you can buy their flower foam paper. It's like this really thin foam. And what's funny is uh, you're supposed to use it, I, I thought you could just heat it up with like a heating tool. You're supposed to put it on top of one of those little craft um, irons. They're really small. And I think I had a tulip one and it just didn't really work that great because it doesn't get that hot. So I returned it and then I went to Michael's to buy another one. Like I couldn't find it just the other day. So I'm like, okay, I, I got to find one. But now I have to buy a flipping little iron to uh, do that with. So, you know, there's different things that... Anyway, that come with that. So I'm going to pull out the stencils. I don't know if I'll be using the paper from this kit. Um, maybe I'll use some of the matting paper that they have here. It did come with watercolor paper and other things. But, like, you know, card base. Um, we'll see. Um, I'll probably use the stamps just for the sentiments and things. We'll see what happens there. I, I, mean, I might use more of the stamps. I'll just leave those out for now. And then I'll pull out paper and stuff as I need it. But basically my idea was um i was trying out those markers that i just did a video for those little cheap markers that you can find like on amazon at tuesday morning that look like this but they come in all sorts of different brand names supposedly um so i was trying them out just to see if i can use them what i have here to color in something so i did this little gorgeous girl and she came out adorable i'm not the best at doing the hair i'm telling you hair right now i don't know why it's been really difficult for me to get a handle on so anyway I colored her with all the different things, and um, and then I cut her out. I don't really like fussy cutting things, especially this close to it, but I had used a scrap piece of paper that had a bunch of little marker marks all over it. So I thought, well, I'll just cut her out. So I spent, you know, 10 minutes cutting out everything. So I thought she can be my um, focal point or the topper. And then um, after I cut her out, as you can see, there are some little white areas. What I would like to do with that is I usually just take a pen. I guess I could get that one. Where's my... What did I do with that pen? <laughs> well, I have a Sharpie here for some reason. And I would just go around all the edges. And all you're doing is basically making that white edge not so rough. So I'm gonna go around and do that. I'm gonna collect some things that we can use with our stencil and I'll be back. Okay guys, so I got some stuff together. Really quick, I wanna show you, <laughs> ew. This gesso, I got it from Amazon. It just says acrylic gesso white it's by i don't know i've never even opened this just so you guys know and it's a little bit dusty because i left it in my garage i was like amazon delivered it they put it behind my garage door and i was like i could have totally run this over and for some reason i forgot what happened i had it i went and opened anyway it doesn't matter i noticed it and i was like why did these people deliver and put it behind your like in front of your garage door if you're backing out you know but anyway i never opened this just so you know and i went to open it right now because i thought oh, i'll use some of this and it is like moldy and it smells like mold really bad so i'm gonna throw this away which i did i threw it in the trash but i thought you know what i'll show it to you guys just in case because that is gross and apparently i never had any kind of like lid i don't know and then um to apply you know the gesso or those kind of things i was looking at different paste that i have i was like oh you know maybe i have one of those like plastic palette knives which i didn't find but i went through this little cute close to my heart box i don't know if they still sell this but this is their texture and um create a shade well no that's the brushes but it comes it came it's a little texture kit and it came with all these brushes it has um serum coat like thick paint to stuff it has distressing inks and then underneath i was like this thing's really good it has all kinds of um files and daubers and dabbers and stencil brushes which is kind of what i needed i thought that's kind of funny and at the bottom it has a ton of i don't know what they are some kind of plastic i don't know but it didn't have what I was looking for initially, but I guess I could use those stencil daubers if, you know, if I wanted to, but I thought it was kind of cute. Very cute little kit. If they still sell it, you know, maybe want to look into it. But um, not using that. I just thought I'd show it to you guys. I just picked out some inks 
these are all the purple, not all the purple, but the purple inks that they sell, um, Spectrum Noir that like kind of go with each other. I think I'm going to dabble in some of this Damson wine. It's the darkest purple because her little purse looks kind of deep purple. She has some blue and turquoise colors. So I'm using Pacifica from um, Close to My Heart Ink. I grabbed a Glimmer Mist because I thought, why not? And this one's like an orange color. Sharp orange. And then I have some Liquitex um, Super Heavy Gesso. And I have not used this before. Or this one. And... I'm gonna have to find something to apply it with. I know I have a palette knife because you know they always come with like cheap like art kits and stuff like that. So maybe hopefully I can find one in the next few minutes here. But I'm gonna use that last anyway, so it doesn't matter. And then I got one of their card bases from the card kit from the kit. This card is, stock is heavy. I mean this is super heavy. This is 65 pound Nina paper, and I mean I don't know you can't tell, but the thickness on that I mean is. <laughs> amazing so I kind of hate to just use it as a card base I feel like you should use it as the card itself but there we have that um so that is five by seven this piece of white paper I cut down to um four and a quarter by six and a quarter because I'm going to do a mat behind it's a quarter inch and then it's going to leave a quarter inch all around for the white card base um I don't know how messy this is going to get so what I'll probably do is just move some of these things aside and use my glass mat. I've been shying away from the glass mat because I uh, don't like that shine. <laughs> I have a big chandelier right above my head and it just, let me try to cover that up there. Okay, well, that's not gonna help for too long. But we're gonna take this and I could just tape it down, but you know what, I don't think I'm gonna tape it down, but what I should do maybe, just to help me kind of keep my paper in place, is put a little glue on the back, right? We'll see if that even helps. Did that even work? Did that glue come out? I always use glue runners the wrong way. Do you guys do that? Like, I don't know. <laughs> I don't, there it goes. Okay. There it goes. Is that so you guys can see it? Okay. And let's pick out a stencil. I don't know what I was going to do. I just, you know, do it. And I don't even know why I pulled out so many different things. Maybe I can't use three different things on a small space. Because I was thinking, oh, I'll even stamp through it. So uh, I have a lot going on in my mind. Um, I want to use the dots for sure. I think that's a for sure thing. And... Mm, mm, I don't know. This one's kind of lame, but at the same time, maybe that's a better thing for me to try out. Just something basic after all these dots. Okay, sorry about all that shine there. So yeah, I think what I'm gonna do is build this up a little bit. So, okay, we have our stencil. It's shiny on both sides, so I guess it doesn't matter which side goes down. This one looks like it's better. So I'm gonna hold that there. And uh, first thing I'm just gonna do is some inking. And I think I'm gonna spray this with the orange. God, I hope that works. <laughs> We'll see. I haven't used Glimmer Mist in a long time. So, what happened to my little pads? This thing, <laughs> I was like, oh, I'll just go right into this and now the pads are missing. So I'm gonna use this one because it already has some kind of like blue, purple color in it. And just really get that in there. Ugh, okay. And I'm going to hold this down, hopefully. We could also tape this down if you wanted to. You know what, I'll do that. Just help me a little bit. So tell you guys, I don't use stencils all the time, so it's not something I like even think about. Oh, I should prep it this way or do that or anything else. Okay, I'm gonna hold this down up here. Oh, sorry. So I'm just putting pieces of tape just to kind of help me hold it down. That's all. And I'm gonna go in. I'm doing a little more heavy-handed on the outer corner and then lighting letting it get lighter as I go in because I'm going to come up with the blue from this top bottom corner up. So I'm just going to switch to the other side of this. You guys know I always like, I know a lot of people switch out the pads in between. I'm like, eh. I'm just going to go into the other side of this guy and really kind of lean into that blue side instead of letting the purple really touch. You know what I'm saying? On this back end, this purple, I'm kind of keeping it up so it's not doing its thing. 
and now I can turn it around and use both sides. See, that worked out well, right? So purple on purple side, blue on blue side, and just kind of blend them together a little bit. Okay, that is good for me. I'm probably gonna bring that circle one back to do the gesso stuff, because that's kind of what I was envisioning, like just a big chunky white area, I don't know. Look how cute. Okay, so that's that one. And I'm gonna take this other guy, and just go ahead and clean off your stencils as you go along. I'm going to continue working, but um, I'm going to take this guy and put him like here. And of course, this stencil, you can do whatever you want. The whole thing kind of fits in this thing, so I'm going to leave it like that. I'm going to use that same washi tape I just used. I'm not really going to move this one, so... But there's an exposed edge over here, and I want to make sure that that doesn't... I'm sorry about that lighting, guys. i got to get that arranged. <laughs> I'm going to use that to actually help me cover up this area that might get sprayed because it's on the edge and the stencil isn't quite there. Now, these guys, you're supposed to kind of roll them in your hand. <laughs> I already gave it a violent shake earlier, so I'm not going to pretend to, like, now be super careful. But <laughs> just not to get air bubbles, because you guys remember this glitter mist. It just clogs up, and it's, like, the worst. But... I'm going to give it a little burp. Sometimes that helps it out. And I really want this to really make that design, so I'm really going to spray it. I don't want to get too soaked, but I do want the design to show up, right? So this is going to be interesting. Let me go get a... I'm leaving it right here. I'm going to go get a paper towel, and I'll be right back. So let me just show you why I grabbed a paper towel, because it's all over, and I don't want to pick that up and then have drips just kind of dripping in there. So I'm going to soak up this little extra bits that I can. I'm going to kind of hold it down as I take off my washi tape. Oh. And go ahead and take this with me. Oh, darn it. Well, not too bad. Not too bad. That's not from what I did. It's from when I sprayed it. It just got underneath a little bit. Let me go put these in my uh, kitchen. I'm going to wash these up and I'll be right back. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is so crazy. In the time I went, you know, I cleaned up, I went to look for a palette knife. I'm like, you can't tell me I don't have a palette knife. I'm like, I know I always buy those cheap, like, art kits, and there must be one in there. I had, like, three of these art kits that I got, like, at Michael's a long time ago. But then that means I have three boxes. And I'm like, you know what? <laughs> you don't need all the boxes. So I remember, you know, I looked through all my clay stuff, and for right now, and I was like, you know, the kids' stuff, because I know they have, like, cheap little, little cheap art supplies. And I found this out in the garage. Because, like I told you, my kitchen, after everything exploded and it had all this water damage, I had to go re-go through everything in my craft room because they had to pack everything up and move it out. I got rid of tons of boxes. There's still about 15 boxes from when I moved here, plus everything that they moved out is already back in here or put away somehow in the garage. So I still have about 15 boxes to go through, large boxes, and I'm just going to make it hurt because, like, everything I have in here is what I need. <laughs> everything that's out in the garage is, like... You know, but there are sentimental things wrapped up in there, so I gotta go through it. So, sorry I make my videos longer just to talk about things. But, and when I saw this, I was like, yes, that's what I was looking for. Because, you see, I opened it and I shoved things from other boxes in here. So, this is like a little water. This is cute. This is a watercolor um, box. And so, it has a little tub that you blow up for your little water if you're, like, on the go. But, what I was looking for, more importantly, is this. So. Okay. Now... As far as this goes, I kind of want the circles to not be exactly the same, and I just want to just stick some on here. Like, whatever. So, maybe like that? I don't know. I have no idea what this is going to look like. I just figure we'll try it. Alright. And kind of what I want to do is make sure that it really gets down in the corner area, or like there, and then it kind of fades away as it comes this way, right? The, the stuff. And I'm just trying to stick down the stencil at this point. I'm not really trying to stick down the paper. So I'm just putting a little piece there. Oh my gosh. This washi came from AliExpress. I think someone sent it to me free for ordering other things. But either way, AliExpress is still a good place just to get washi because it's super cheap. Okay. How about that? Let's open this and hopefully our fingers crossed that this isn't <laughs> horrible. Okay. Oh, this one's sealed. Oh, it's gorgeous. Look at this stuff. I mean, just when I opened it, it's just sitting there. I can still smell the other one. Ugh, I must have not closed it right. It's still sitting here next to me. <laughs> it does. It just smells like anything that's moldy. Like, ugh, it's just an ugly smell. So anyway, oh my gosh, this is wonderful. So this is Liquitex, again, heavy gesso. 
And you can mix color in this with, you know, into it if you wanted to. I'm kind of want to just get rid of this, but but since I'm cheap, I like to pull all that away. This is getting all over my hands. So this is basically what you would put down to prep like your surfaces for painting. So anyway, it's just the nice thick stuff and you're gonna be able to notice it when I lay it down, that's all. And not that I'm the biggest mixed media person, I'm not, I have no idea. And I don't wanna put too much because this is a small card. So let's see, something like that. And I'm gonna grab it on the back of this, to be honest, okay. Eh, maybe that's still too much. Basically, once I rub it on here, it's not like I'm going to put it back in the jar. So you kind of just want to use what you're going to use. And if it's not enough, I'll get more. So I'm just going to rub that on there. And I'm coming in at an angle and just kind of being artsy with it. You know what I'm saying? You want some thickness, some thinness. You don't want just splotches to lay down perfectly. Does that work? I kind of want it to be like thick in some areas and not so thick in other areas. Probably better. Okay. I have a little bit that probably didn't get used, so I'm going to put it right here, and that's fine. Wash that up. Alright. I'm going to carefully peel off this instead of like what I did before when I just peeled it off at the same time. Oopsie. I probably should have kept my hand on this other side. We're learning, guys. We're learning. I tell you, I'm not the stencil gal. That's not me. Okay. Oh, I love it. So what's on here, I don't know, but hopefully you can see the texture here. And that's all I wanted, just something different on here. This stuff is thick. It's awesome. So I'm going to let this dry completely, which I guess will take a while. I'll cut my mats and I'll come back and talk about that, but I'll be back. Okay, so while we're waiting for this to dry, um, I brought my coffee over because I started doing this like at 6.30 in the morning. But anyway, um, my little piece of paper obviously got very wet from the spray and all that. Well, just the spray, really. But look how cute. Oh my gosh, I love it. I'm adding in some glitter to that gesso or whatever. But anyway, I'm going to put this to the side somewhere where it's not going to get hurt. Um, over here. And in the meantime, I'm going to... Oh, I thought I cleaned up all this gesso, but apparently I didn't. Okay, so these guys, of course, washed off really well. They're plastic. That's no surprise. Um, you know, so really easy to work with. I did grab their paper pack real quick. I think I'm going to put my black mat back down for better viewing for you guys. How's that? All right. So then, all right. And then, um, so yeah, so I'm going to do is take this black paper. I need one sheet of that only because I'm going to add some sentiment with those little stamps and then, um, we're going to use them like that poetry paper, like those little We'll see. We'll see when I get there. And I think I'm going to use this orange piece because I was like, hey, what am I going to put behind the layering? That orange piece looks great to me. There's also this pretty purple. Already both those colors matching my, like, what's going on there, but that's okay. And so this one I'm going to cut down. I don't know if my paper cutter fits in frame, but it doesn't quite matter. Um, to four and a half. These are eight-inch pieces of paper that they send. I think Miranda's waking up. My husband wakes up like at five and he goes to the gym. Or he gets up actually before that because he goes to the gym at five. And then whenever he comes back, Miranda usually wakes up. And then she goes back to sleep. So I have her on the couch here. So what did I say? Four and a half. My six and a half. So that's just the layering piece I'm going to put behind. I'm only putting one layering piece behind. Put these to the side. And where is the rest of my paper? There it is. Just going to keep these to the side here. Keep my little piece. And I was stamping on Nina paper. I was doing all that stuff on that Nina paper. 65 pound. 80 pound is better if you're going to be doing Copics and stuff like that. But the 65 pound paper is just fine for everything else. Um, so I'm going to do wishing you a beautiful day. May all your wishes come true. Sure, because I don't have anything else. Where's Daddy? He went to work. Let me get this okay. set up. So I'm just going to take this one stamp that says may all your wishes come true. And I had seen that they did a card using some of these things in the, um, the cover there and they cut it up. So what I'm going to do is just stamp that. Eh, 
not the Christmas stamp, but you know what? It looks like typeface, so I'll be okay with that. And you can cut this with your paper trimmer to be more exact. I'm going to cut it with scissors just to give it a more of a whimsical feel. So I'm just going to come in. And I do like that they did a little design with like a liner pen. Which I might have just blown it because the way I cut it so small to each other. If you want to make more room, you can just stamp this twice and then cut one piece you know, the way you need it with the extra white around it and then cut the other piece accordingly. You know what I'm saying? Give it more of the edge to the other part. But I think that's kind of fun. Just leave it a little more whimsical looking. And then, um, oh, I even know where my liner pens are. I'm telling you, who is this girl? Um, I have my Micron ones here. I know I'm still misplacing some things when I tell you guys. I know where it is and then I don't know where it is. This is just a Micron point. Well, zero, 01, it's a small, very fine. Maybe I should have gone with a thicker line, but I'm just gonna kind of go through and add some lines here and there, maybe some dots in between. Whatever makes it look kind of cute and more original. And of course, not perfect. It's not what we're looking for right now. So do you see what I do there? Just put some lines on it. Boop. Okay, doesn't want to focus. There we go. And what I'm going to do with this is go ahead and glue it down to like a little piece of the black paper. And dare I use the same glue that I never know how to use? <laughs> Hold on. Let me. Oh, I got it this time. Okay, just ran some glue on the back of that. And we're just going to place it here. I'm going to place it in the corner already just so that it already has some less area to cut out. This paper is really thick. What's up with that? This one's kind of thin because I guess it's their layering paper. And this one is nice and thick. But again, I'm just going to go through here and just trim that down again. You can use your paper cutter if you really want it to be like super exact. For right now, I'll do the same thing with the other, with the mail, your. And we have that. And I will be okay, back. Okay, so obviously that just was not dry yet. I'm going to have to give it a few hours probably. So I'll probably come back in a little bit. I'm probably going to go around the edges and just kind of darken it up. I don't know if I'm going to use the blue or the purple. Or maybe blue on one side, purple on the other. That might be okay too. Just to make the edges a little less stark. But I changed my mind. I'm going to put a black mat on the back. And what's kind of interesting about this black paper, like I said, it's super thick, is one side's kind of shiny, the other side's kind of matte. I don't know if you can see that. I know it's probably hard to see. I can feel it. This side's super smooth and shiny. I'll probably have that side facing up. And I'm going to use this dreaded <laughs> tool here, but it's not dreaded. Actually, I was going to say, I think I got this when um, those nice people sent it to me uh, to review. Uh, diamond Press, the people that make the Diamond Press. Which is kind of interesting, because that machine first came out with Crafter's Companion, and then they stopped making it, and I guess um, the Diamond Press people took it over? I don't know. But that's the name of it. Oh, and this card is kind of interesting because it opens. Oof, I don't know if that's a little bit more over this way and a little bit more up there. Oh, this is kind of why I don't do a lot of matte and layering because I always feel like I do it wrong. Um, but anyway, these cards open really the long way. So up this way or out this way, but it's a long fold or short. I don't know if that'd be short or long. Okay, I'm going to take our little orange paper, and the orange paper has the same coloring, I would say, on either side. And I'm probably going to stick down the gessoed paper with a wet glue because I really want it to, like, stick down. But for right now, we're just doing this. Okay, and I will have to come back to complete it, but basically, we're going to do that. When this guy's nice and dry and has his little accent pieces, we're going to put that here. We're going to put her somewhere around here. And then the mayor wishes come true kind of popped up somewhere here and there. I think it's going to be adorable. So let's let it dry and we're almost done. Okay, guys, I know this isn't 100% dry, but I kind of want to move on and get going with the rest of the day. So um, I did mat with the black mat and then the orange mat. So they're basically all a quarter inch smaller than the five by seven, right? Five by seven, six and three quarter by four and three quarter, then six and a half by four and a half, and then six and a quarter by four and a quarter, okay? And then as I was looking at it, I'm like, you know what? It would be cute if it was just off to a little angle. So I'm going to do that and um, put these other pieces down. I did go ahead and add a little 
more detail around the edges. And this might be where I'm gonna use my Beacon 3 and what I love this glue. I totally forgot I love this glue, but my husband had some magnets that he got from South Korea the other day as we were going through all our stuff in the garage and he's like, oh, I wanna put these up. I'm like, okay. And one of them fell right out of his hand. So I was like, oh, I have this stuff that will glue anything together, you know? So we used this and so I opened a new one because my other ones I haven't used in so long they were like not doing it. I just want to put a good amount of glue. This is an interesting glue. It does dry really fast, but it also has a very <laughs> caustic smell. But um, I don't know, I just like it. And it's good for things that are chunky. And So I'm going to hold this down for a little bit. See that it's still wet there, you know that. So I'm going to be very careful as I go around these edges. But I do want to get it down and flat, so I will be right back. Okay, right, while back. I was kind of drying, or I was flattening it out, I also put little tiny bits on the back of these guys. Um, all over the back of my little lady here, and I already took the plastic backing off those two. So let me bring this back. I don't, I don't know what I want to do with her. I don't want her to be straight, because that just seems boring. And it's kind of like she's laying down, just so you know, this time she's like laying in a field of flowers or whatever, kind of watching the sky. So that's kind of where I want her. This is so cute. And then these little guys. And I think what I'll do is stick this down with the same 3-in-1 glue. But I just kind of want to see how I want to do this, because I want to do a little bit. Okay, let me look at this straight again. If it was straight like this, then we have mail your wishes come true. Eh. Unless I do want to put them straight, but just kind of off set from each other. This is always hard for me to decide. Especially since I did the thing sideways. Hmm. This shouldn't take me this long to think about. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> Something like that. It looks really wonky, but that's fine. And I'm going to put a lot of glue. Kind of using it like it was call all glue, like a thick dab. Even though it will melt down after a little while, but not too much. So I'm just sticking a good amount, as you can see there. And I'm just going to let it kind of sit on its own. I'm not going to squish it down. Okay, and this one I'll probably put three dabs. One there. I'll squish this one down a little bit, just so it kind of goes under the other one. That call out glue that Spectrum at uh, Crafts Command uses, do they sell it here in the States? I feel like I've never seen it and I've never seen them bring it to like HSN or anything and I really want some. I like how it's all thick and it just stays thick like that, you know? Yeah, that weirds me out. <laughs> okay, the way I chose to do that, but that's okay. You love and you learn. All right, that is it guys. So hopefully you like the card, you like the you know, tutorial, I guess, a review. I don't know what it was. I just wanted to play with that box and I told you guys I would, so I did it. So thanks for watching. I'll have pictures for you. And if there's links for anything that I know of, I will put them in the description box. But um, that is it. Bye now.